Hello, my friends. My name is Ryan Freeman. Welcome to my life and welcome to this episode. I am going to share with you a eminent doctor of the soul, a depth psychologist from the mid-early 20th century. His name was Carl Gustav Jung. Carl Gustav Jung. Um, he was a phenomenal explorer of the human mind. And there's a lot about him that you could find online. I am not a Jungian analyst. I'm not a, I don't have a PhD in psychology, but I'm a person who found great value from reading uh, many of Jung's books. And so I would just like to share my understanding and my perspective uh, for anyone out there who is going through perhaps a little psychological turmoil um, <laughs> and perhaps you will benefit from, from what I have to say. And in any case, take it with a grain of salt. So uh, real quick, Memories, Dreams, and Reflections by Carl Jung. This is his autobiography. Um, I don't necessarily recommend you start with this book, but it, uh, if you do end up liking Jungian psychology, uh, this will give you a great background into the man who created it, uh, and as well as a lot of his insights are peppered through his story, um, and also just sort of a great appreciation for a, for a great genius. Uh, you know, this guy, he read, I, I believe, Latin, wrote in Latin, um, probably Greek as well, and um, English, and I don't know if he spoke French, but spoke German. He was very well educated. Jordan Peterson, a contemporary psychologist who's, uh, who's really big on the world stage and highly respected by top-level scholars, taught at Harvard, taught at the University of Toronto, said that no one in this world is educated like Jung today. So, very heavy hitter. Um, also, I should, I should mention that reading Jung is, is heavy uh, because he's talking about parts of our human experience, parts of our uh, soul or psychology, however you want to think of it, um, parts of it that don't usually get covered in movies or in your church discussion. I mean, he's really, he's digging deep. So uh, I, I got drawn to Jung because I was dealing with deep parts of my psychology that I didn't understand. And um, I had heard from Terrence McKenna, who was uh, just an amazing hero of psychedelics in the 80s and 90s. Um, he said that uh, Jung was great for finding maps. Jung, Jung had made the best map of the human soul. So, um, and, I, and I truly believe that if you are, if you want to understand your mind and uh, I mean in and you're not afraid of the dark parts then Carl Jung is the guy because Freud only goes so deep and then Jung goes a little bit deeper um, but with that being said everyone's gonna have a slightly different experience and perhaps not everyone will take to Carl Jung uh, another book uh, I'm just gonna pull these at random his book synchronicity um, synchronicity. I actually haven't finished reading this, uh, so I'm looking forward to it, but Jung coined the term synchronicity, which is basically uh, meaningful coincidences. You know, you're thinking about, um, I wish I had lobster to eat while you're on a mountaintop and there's no lobster, right? Obviously. And then suddenly a backpacker comes down and says, man, I've got these lobster bars. Would you like one? And you go, what the heck? What are the chances? Or you're thinking about your grandmother in Connecticut that you haven't talked to in five years. And you're just thinking, man, I, I hope I could patch things up with her. We had a fight and then suddenly she calls. Um, these weird, meaningful coincidences, They're, those are synchronicity. And so Jung um, coined that term. So if you've ever heard that term, say thank you to Carl Jung. Um, and this is his book where he actually talks about uh, some, so, some evidence um, and some theories about that. So I should note this. So Carl Jung, everyone who studies psychology will find out about him. But from my understanding, he is not... He is not covered as much as he should be uh, in a lot of schools and universities because 
Carl Jung wasn't a hardcore materialist. He did see himself as a scientist and a doctor first and always tried to use science as often as he could, but uh, also freely admitted that um, when you're dealing with the human experience and when you're getting into the deeper parts of our instincts and our emotions like love and our feelings of God and wonder and awe and all of that kind of stuff that starts to get woo woo. Um, you, science can't really measure that, right? Science deals with measuring things and using numbers. And sometimes you can't put numbers on, on the deeper parts of us. Usually we go to church or we read a novel or watch a movie to understand that. Um, but Carl Jung built a system. And uh, so some of his ideas uh, are not so popular in academic circles because academic circles currently um, are, they want to stay as close to materialism as possible. That's my understanding. Correct me if I'm wrong with the comments, please. Because uh, I, like I said, I am not a professor, but I, I have spent a lot of time with this subject. So um, next up uh, at random answer to Job answer to Job is a thin book um, I believe it uh, not his last book but towards the later part of his life answer to Job, and I think he even writes uh, somewhere in the forward that he wouldn't have had the courage to write answer to Job uh, in his earlier years because you know we all grow up some not everyone some of you guys some people grow up very uh, liberal and very open to talking about all ideas, um, but some of us grow up with with uh, religious education, and I, like it took me many many years to to even talk about things that were outside of the Christianity, the Baptist conservative upbringing that I had. Um, and so, uh, answer to Job talks about the evolution of God. Uh, and and hear me out, hear me out. I'm not trying to offend anyone with this or convert anyone or anything like that but he talks about uh the the god in job job is a book of the bible um he's the guy that uh the devil has a wager with god and says i bet you your servant job uh won't won't love you so much if you give him some trials and tribulations and god says are you kidding job's my man paraphrasing right and uh the devil I don't even know if he's called the devil. He might be called Lucifer. I'm not exactly sure. But uh, but basically, Job's life gets toyed with in a way that is absolutely atrocious. I mean, you, you come away with the opinion that God is just cruel. I mean, it's, it's a hard hitter. Um, and sure enough, if you read the Old Testament of the Bible, and Job is considered uh, by many scholars to be the oldest book, although it's not the first book in the in the Old Testament, they uh, many scholars believe that it is the oldest uh, oldest one. Um, and the the God of the Old Testament is a very harsh God. You know, he's a king that is jealous, that wants genocide and blood uh, offerings, like many ancient deities. Um, and then the God of the New Testament, you know, is more loving and compassionate. Um, so how how did that change? And so uh, Carl Jung talks about some of the reasons why people had to change the image of God. Um, uh, not necessarily saying that that was a conscious decision, but our understanding of God changed uh, through the millennia. So that's a very interesting book if you're ever curious about why is the God of the Old Testament and the God of the New Testament so different? Answer to Job will give you a lot of insight. Um, and then the next book, this is one of my favorites. This is The Undiscovered Self. And probably one of my favorites because I think it was maybe the first book of Jung's that I read. Um, and I should say about the order that you should read books, there are some people who would recommend reading his, some of his books first before you get to his more complex ones. I don't know. I just read them in the order that I got them. But The Undiscovered Self um, is another short one. And you can see I have lots of highlights uh, in it. Um, I find it's a problem highlighting him because he says so many insightful things that... I end up having too many highlights. Um, but with that being said, The Undiscovered Self is really good. And I think it's really important today because, it, 
Jung's idea, uh, basically, in, in perhaps through all of his his books, or one of his main ideas, is that is that you do have a central self inside of you, some some center, some psychic center, and the more that you can follow that psychic center, the healthier your mental health is. The further away from your psychic center. Like your psychic center wants you to, let's say, uh, go for your dream, but you don't follow it because you're afraid. Oh, then you're gonna suffer a neuroses. You're gonna suffer a your personality gets split, so to say. But if your psychic center says follow your dream, but you have the courage to do it, now you're on your, the hero's journey. And although it's scary and you have to face dragons, you know, like criticism from your family and all of that. Um, your mental health will be restored. Um, and so the undiscovered self uh, is about how living in the modern world is very difficult to follow yourself. Um, that's one of the ideas because as we live in mass populations, you know, we have a global village now with we're connected by telecommunication and the internet. Um, we have t so many opinions and scientists and family co commenting on Facebook that can try to give us their opinion of how to live, how to behave, wear a mask, stay in line, work a job you hate. You know, we get all of these ideas and suddenly it drowns out that, that inner self. And he talks about some of the consequences of that uh, living in the modern world and uh, how that could lead to totalitarianism, um, as well as uh, dangerous mobs. And I think it's pretty relevant today because I think there's a lot of people who are brainwashed and completely mentally, probably mentally ill for, for the most part. And I think those people are probably the ones we see on TV a lot of the times causing a lot of damage or or destroying the nature, destroying a lot of things. Um, so The Undiscovered Self. I'm going to talk about these books perhaps uh, each in their own video and go into detail because I'm just sort of going off the top of my head. And the next book uh, is Symbols of Transformation. Symbols of Transformation is uh, it's a thick, heavy book, man. This is, you know, hundreds of pages. And Jung's writing is, you know, very dense. He's got lots of footnotes. And you can't ignore the footnotes because the footnotes uh, have a lot of the gold that you're probably looking for. Um, Jung was the best writer of footnotes. So uh, it's kind of an interesting uh, thing to read him. But Symbols of Transformation, I think it was one of his earlier books um, that he updated and revised as his ideas, I believe, became a little bit more refined. But he uses a lot of mythological material from Native American mythology to uh, Indian mythology, like India mythology, to uh, Christian mythology, I think, and then even from uh, Homer's The Iliad um, and... Uh, so exhaustive material from from religions like Mithraism, which was an ancient Roman religion that was very similar to Christianity. Um, not very similar, but in some ways. Uh, Egyptian uh, stories and sort of gets into what is the central motif of the transformation of a man, the transformation of his consciousness. Um, so if you're curious, like if your mind has gone through some big transformations, uh, and you want to sort of understand that, you know, like why, why am I so introverted? Why do I want to stay in my room reading and, and coloring when I used to love to go outside? Well, Symbols of Transformation will help you. It is a thick read and uh, so you got to really be up for it. Another thick read, Psychological Types by Carl Jung, very thick. Um, uh, Jung is very honest and candid when he says that it, it's impossible to just draw a line and say this is that type of person, this is uh, this type of person because human psychology is never just stagnant. It's, it's moving around a little bit and it's hard to exactly draw a line, um, especially with how complicated and detailed we all are when you really look in. Um, but that being said, if you're going to deal with talking about it in any sort of meaningful way, it does help to actually say, extrovert, introvert. And we know this word, and we know these words because Jung coined them. Jung made the word extrovert and introvert because he saw those as the two basic 
attitudes towards life. And then he went and said, some people are more intellectual using their brain. Some people are more feeling based. Some people are more intuitive based. Some people are more sense oriented. And so Psychological Types is a great book if you're interested in different personality types. And uh, Jungian typology is probably not the most popular today. I think a lot of people, there's other systems, you know, you take those tests. What would you do in this, you answer 50 questions. What would you do in this situation? Are you more of this type of person? And then it gives you a little INTJ blade, whatever. I, I don't actually, I'm not familiar so much, but um, I know that I believe the Myers Briggs test, which is one of the bigger ones, is based off of Jungian typology. Um, I like Jungian typology uh, really a lot. Uh, it's very helpful. And he also give, gives a, he gives a history lesson before he even gets to his typology um, that I'll talk about when I talk about that book in specific. Next is, uh, this is sort of a random book, The Development of Personality. Um, just a collection of essays that uh, mostly deals with uh, child psychology. So if you're inter interested in understanding um, sort of a, a Jung's take on child psychology and, and the effects that a parent and an entire family can have on their child, um, it's really awesome. I, I I really think it's awesome, and I think I think every parent should read it because, um, you know, we Jung's ideas are not the prevalent ones that you have today, but they're much deeper, much more intelligent, and I think a little bit more uh, perspicacious, a little more, um, a little more, I don't know, uh, discerned. So, next is two essays on analytical psychology. I bought this after. Um, I was going through a really rough patch. Uh, <laughs> I thought I was losing my mind. Thought I, I thought I was going going crazy. And um, so I was looking on YouTube. Um, Jordan Peterson uh, talks a lot about depth psychology, Jung amongst others. And he recommended, I found a video that was related to the problem I was having. And he, he said, if anyone is doing this type of psychology with themselves, I highly recommend two essays uh, on analytical psychology and so I got this book um, really as a safety raft hoping that it would help me out you know because when you're having psychological problems like really deep psychological problems I mean it feels like you're drowning and you're gonna die right and you need to learn how to swim and so part of reading you is is sort of learning how to do the breaststroke and the backstroke and perhaps you'll create your own style later but um, True enough, to, uh, to Jordan Peterson, there were several ideas uh, that I found in this book that I did not find in others that were very helpful, very, very helpful. Uh, and uh, uh, those were the main ones that, that I was going to talk about. Also, uh, a one that I actually don't have with me, uh, Modern Man and the Search for a Soul, I, be I believe. I've heard that that's the one recommended to sort of introduce to Jung to people. It was sort of written to give an overview of Jungian psychology to the common man. It's at my brother's house. I recommended it to him. I don't think he's read it yet. <laughs> I haven't asked for it back and it's been like over a year. Um, man and His Symbols is also something like that. It's a uh, collection of essays related to Jungian psychology, some written by Jung himself and uh, many written by uh, some of his followers and disciples. Um, Probably my least favorite uh, Jungian book because whenever I read about Jungian psychology, but not from Jung himself, just it lacks it lacks the the magic. You know, it would be like listening to a pep speech by Tony Anth Tony Robbins Tony Robbins uh, assistant. You know, it's like it's probably pretty good, but it doesn't really do it. Um, not that I'm a Tony Robbins guy at all, but. Uh, but it is still good. There, there are ideas in Man and His Symbols that you might not find in some of his other books. So, um, And then this, The Portable Yoon, this was edited and also has an introduction by Joseph Campbell, which I would like to do a little video series about uh, in the near future. And the cool thing about The Portable Yoon um, is that Campbell was a great scholar of Yoon. You can actually, he has many videos. Uh, if you can track them down, they were on PBS where he talks about Jung and he he really clarified a lot for me through those because he he had slides that sort of put a lot of Jung's ideas um, 
sort of in a graphic image that helped make a lot of sense. But this, he sort of distills uh, the key chapters in all of Jung's books to give you a solid foundation of understanding his theory. Um, so it has a little from each of his books. Um, and I should mention that this is, although these are a lot of books I'm showing you, Jung had many more, and I will probably continue reading Jung for many years to come. Um, and then this second to the last book, C.G. Jung on Nature and Modern Life. There's a lot of books, if you ever shop for Jung, that uh, it's people that just sort of put uh, parts of Jung's writings around a theme. So this is, you know, sometimes you want to read the whole book through. You don't want just little selections. But if you want selections, like I got this because I was going to the mountains and I just wanted to read what Jung had to say about nature. It's not necessarily about mountains. It's about nature itself, human nature, and his opinions. Um, and uh, very cool stuff. And he relates a lot of stories. And it, it, it draws from material that you wouldn't find in his books, from his letters. Jung's letters are prized. And I should say, if you've never heard of Jung, he's really popular with some people. Like He's like a whole other religion for a lot of people because... If his system works for you, it really does help you in, in great ways, as it has helped me. Um, but it might not help everyone. And then the last one uh, that I'll introduce is Mysterium Canunciationis. I mean, I don't even know how to pronounce that. And uh, I actually haven't read this yet. Uh, this is my newest one. Um, I got a few months ago, and I've just sort of read the foreword and, and read the, a bit of the first chapter. Um, it's a heavy hitter, um, it's something about alchemy and, um, the union of opposites, sort of uniting your dark and light side, I believe, um, but a lot more than that with a lot more detail. So, um, yeah, those are all of my union books. That was just a brief introduction, not so brief, perhaps a long video, but a brief introduction about each book. And actually I'm thinking I will probably do a video for, um, each of the books just to give you um, the key ideas that really helped me. If you're interested and you want me to do a video on any one of those books, please write in the comments. Ryan, please do a, a book about, please do a video about the ideas in the two essays that saved you. Please do an essay about what child psychology ideas you think are the most important. Ryan, what do you think about Jungian types? Ryan, what do you mean symbols of transformation? You know, whatever, anything that I talked about today, if you have any questions or you, you think that I can clarify something, I'm not an expert on Jungian psychology, but, but I have spent a lot of time thinking about it. It's helped me tremendously, and I would be glad to share whatever I have with you. Thank you for watching this video, and I will see you soon.